And, and there's so many things that go into trying to learn a new song. But the more we actually get to know the song, have the familiarity with it, then you can actually think more about the words that you're singing. Like, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. You're familiar with the words, you're familiar with the tune. And now as you're singing it, you can actually think of the depth of those words. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found was blind, but now I see. And that song, no blood, no altar now, the sacrifice is over. If you have your Bible this evening, I'm going to use a lot of scriptures. We're probably just going to jump and jump and jump and jump with scriptures. I want you to see this because I believe this is very, very vital to the believer. Sacrifices. I'm going to start in Psalm chapter 51. Psalm chapter 51 is where I want to start sacrifices sacrifices i truly believe that god himself killed the first animal i believe god himself took the life of the very first animal and shed the blood of the very first creature and i believe he did it to show man the vileness of his sins and when god killed this animal to make coats of skins for Adam and Eve in the garden. I believe he showed them death has to happen because of your sin. And I believe God himself killed the first sacrifice because man's sin literally was a curse on the whole earth. Plants, animals, humans, nature itself. Man brought a curse upon it. And I believe that first sacrifice that occurred ever since then, you find man sacrificing animals. You find Cain and Abel sacrificing. One is sacrificing animals. One a sheep, a lamb. One sacrificing vegetables. And one God is not pleased with. Because killing a vegetable is not murder. It's not killing anything and there's no blood being shed. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. You cannot take anything that is not blood-like and sacrifice it and call it an actual, literal sacrifice for sin. Now, according to the scriptures, I believe sacrifices, and I'm going to say this before we get into it. Listen clearly. Sacrifices are no more. Clear it up front, sacrifices are no more. But they did exist. They did start with the very first humans. And I believe they ended with Jesus Christ, the one and literally only sacrifice for sins. Psalm chapter 51, David is praying. He, it's a psalm about David's sin. David is in sorrow. David is in grief. He's begging God for mercy for his sin. And what happens when you bring your sins and petitions to God? What happens? When you bring something to God, when you bring your sins before God, a sacrifice has to be made. Could you imagine every time you went to God, to beg him for your forgiveness, you had to kill something. I am grateful we don't have to do that. Uh, can I tell you this? I don't mind killing an animal for food for my family. I don't mind that. There's a reason I do it. And it's only if I can save money as well. But I watched a man one day try to kill a sheep as he tried to cut its throat. And as I stood there, it bothered me. Now, I knew he was killing it for a family feast, a, a sheep. I knew what he was killing it for. This male sheep, I knew why he was killing it. Now, I didn't like the way he was doing it. And I stepped in and said, I will take the life of that animal for you. You're abusing it and I will not put up with that. But when I saw that sheep laying on the ground as I stood there, I still look back on it as a reminder to me that this was a common thing. This used to be common for sheep to be killed, for lambs and rams and, and bullocks to be killed in sacrifice. 
Psalm chapter 51. I'm going to start here in verse number 10. David said in verse number 10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness. From what? What is that word? Blood guiltiness. Your sin is what caused Jesus Christ to need to go to the cross. He, it wasn't his need to go to the cross. It was our need. He did it for our need. We needed a savior. He didn't need us. And he went to that cross. Our sin is the guilt that caused the dying of Jesus Christ on that cross. Our blood guiltiness. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation. And my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and thy mouth shall show forth thy praise. Now I want you to see this. And I want you to listen to this very carefully. This message is going to be a clear, simple one. It's going to be like, it's going to be like eating a bowl of ice cream. Every scoop is going to be the same flavor. It's just going to be in a fl another flavor of chocolate and another spoon of chocolate and another spoon of chocolate. I'm not going to go into a lot of realms. I'm not going to jump out. It's going to be one basic flavor. The same thing throughout this message, okay? I'm going to just come to this topic over and over and over and over and over. But I want you to see it in the scripture. Look at verse 16. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou will not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness. With burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings, then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Then will you be pleased, and then they can do their sacrifices. But David says this, God, your pleasure, your desire, your delight is not in sacrifices or burnt offerings. Do you think that when God created this world, he said, you know what? I want to create animals for my pleasure. That's what it says. We sing that one, Revelation 4, 11. I want to create cows and sheep and goats and, and giraffes and all these other animals. I want to create them for my pleasure. And then I want man to come along and start killing them and butchering them. And I want to watch them as they slit their throats and cut their bodies up and burn them up on an altar. Do you think that actually God said, this is where I will get my pleasure? If you believe that, then your God is just like Satan because Satan desires death, destruction. That's not been a desire or a delight of God. That has been a path that God used for our salvation, Jesus Christ dying on a cross and the symbolism through animals, but that's not been his delight. He created us for his pleasure. He wanted to enjoy time and fellowship with us. You know, if somebody were raising dogs, well-bred championship bloodline dogs, do you think they raise championship bloodline dogs only to sell them to a restaurant overseas? They don't do that. You know what they would do if they found out somebody was taking their championship bloodline dogs and just sending them to a restaurant overseas? They would quit selling to them because you don't raise them for that reason. You think God created animals to be murdered and butchered? Now here's where we're gonna go. We're gonna go into a lot of scriptures, okay? Here we go, Psalms. Chapter four, Psalms chapter four.
I'll try to give you a little bit of time to get there, but I want you to see this. God does not take his delight in the killing of animals. It is not something that God delights in, nor should it ever be something that we would pleasure in animals dying for our sins. Psalm chapter four. David says here, verse one, hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing? Selah. But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Selah. Look at verse number five. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. God wants us to be righteous. He wants us to be right with him. God wants our hearts. Psalm chapter 40. Look at Psalm chapter 40. Like I said, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about a lot of these. I believe you will have clarity and you, as we read through the scriptures, Psalm chapter 40. Psalm chapter 40, verse number four. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done and thy thoughts which are to us word. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. Man, you, can't, you and I cannot talk about the blessings of God and how what he thinks about us, how often he thinks about us in order. We cannot keep it in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ear hast thou opened, burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. He said, it's not been a requirement. It's sacrifices are not a requirement to be godly. I truly believe that in the Old Testament, if there were a Hebrew person that were living that did not sacrifice, God could and still would use them if their heart and life were right with God. The sacrifice was not his delight. It was not his desire. And it even says here, David says, it's not even required. When you give your heart and life to Christ and you truly put your faith and trust in him. Now, did the believers, did those that have their faith and trust in Christ do sacrifices? Yes, they did. But it wasn't because it was required, but it was because they wanted to please God. And this is what he said to do as a, a, an example and symbolic of their walk with God to show those around them. His, this lamb that's dying is a representation of my Savior dying for my sin. A lamb dying was not required for somebody to have faith and trust in God. Psalm chapter 40. Psalm chapter 40. I, I, I'm wrong. Psalm chapter 50. Sorry about that. Psalm chapter 50. I just realized what I said. We already read Psalm chapter 40. Psalm chapter 50. Verse number seven. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against thee. I am God, even thy God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me. I will take no bullock out of thy house nor he goats out of thy folds. For every beast of the forest is mine. You want to kill one for me? They all belong to me, God says. And the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains. And the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee. For the world is mine. And the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer unto God thanksgiving 
and pay thy vows unto the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. God says, these animals that you're sacrificing, you're killing to me in sacrifice symbolically. He said, it's not because I'm hungry. It's not because I need something to eat. When you kill one bull, don't you realize that I own all of them? Oh God, we're going to please you by killing this lamb. And God says, you're going to kill one of my creatures when I own all of them? What are you, what are you really giving to me? What, are you, what do you think you're really giving to me? I own that lamb. It's already mine and I can already do with it as I please. That sacrifice is a symbol of your sin and your blood guiltiness. You're not really giving me a thing. When a person raises a lamb and that lamb is pure and spotless, and they take that young lamb and they take it to the temple, the tabernacle, and they go to offer it. And they're like, oh, God's going to be happy with me now. I'm giving him my best. And God says, you're giving me my own lamb back. You're, you're giving me my own lamb back. That's like your neighbor bringing back your lawnmower that he borrowed and thinking you ought to be happy that he's given you a nice lawnmower. I'm going to give my neighbor a nice lawnmower and you, he brings it over and you're like, well, thanks for bringing my mower back. It's already mine. I've been waiting for you for the last six weeks to bring it back. God says, you bring one lamb to me and I own them all. I own them all. I already own them. What are you giving to me? Look at Isaiah chapter one. Actually, no. Let's go to uh, 1 Samuel first. 1 Samuel. We're jumping backwards because I forgot to use this one. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Some of you already know exactly where I'm going with this one. I believe it is very vital that this be brought into the picture here. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Saul, Saul the king. Saul the king, a wonderful man of God. He is the leader of the nation of Israel, God's chosen king. 1 Samuel chapter 15, look now at verse number 20. 1 Samuel 15, 20, And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. I know, God, that you said just kill it all. Why did God say that? Because it was already God's in the first place. Do you know what they did? They stole God's animals... That's what they did because God said kill them. So they stole them, took them back home so that they could kill them for God. That's what they did. God said kill them. Wipe everything out. And they're like, ha, ah, we know better. We're going to make God happy by taking them home and sacrificing them instead of killing them where they're supposed to be. We're going to make God happy with that. And he says in verse 22, and Samuel said... Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken in the fat of rams. The very first reason we ever saw a sacrifice in the Garden of Eden was because they did not obey. The very first reason you ever saw an animal sacrificed, God killing the animal in the garden for their coats of skins was because they did not obey God's voice, do not eat of the tree. And man is still trying to sacrifice to God without obeying him. How many people tell us all the time, oh, I do this and I do that and I'm taking care of this person and I'm giving to this charity and I'm doing this and I'm doing that and we think we're sacrificing our time. I go to church and I go to, I, I, I sing in the choir. Okay, thank you for telling me all that, but are you, is, it, is all this a sacrifice of your life and your time? You ought to be faithful in church. That's what we ought to do. 
We ought to be faithful to the house of God. We ought to be faithful to the things of God. But are we doing it because we want to please God? Or are we just trying to sacrifice something that he already owns and thinking that we're going to make him happy when really we're not even listening to him in the first place. We're not taking his word and we're not studying his word and we're not listening to him. This is the voice of God, the word of God. Are we not listening and obeying? Now let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter one. Isaiah chapter one. I believe God himself killed the first sacrifice. But let me remind you of this. I believe Jesus Christ himself was the first sacrifice. The lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The first animal sacrifice, the first animal sacrifice was symbolic of the lamb that had already been planned from the very beginning and slain from the foundation of the world. It was already as if it was done. Jesus Christ for us. Isaiah chapter one, look at verse number 11. Verse 11, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Saith the Lord, I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are trouble to me. I am weary to bear them. Does it sound like God was uh, the one that really had a desire for the Hebrew people to sacrifice? God never had a desire in the first place to have to sacrifice animals. It was our disobedience and our sin that caused that. That's never been a desire of God for his own creatures to be murdered, to be butchered as symbolic of what our sin did to Jesus Christ on the cross. That was never God's desire or delight. And he said, do away with it. Quit killing all these things and just obey me. Just, just obey obey me and they couldn't we can't because we have the law we have to follow god we have to kill we have to kill we have to kill we have to and god said i'm done with your sacrifices i'm done with your sabbaths i'm done with your moon, new moons i'm done with your holidays and your feasts i'm done with all your things to hopefully please me i'm not pleased you're not obeying you're not listening do away with it just quit it all you can quit every law i gave you God just told the Hebrew people, just quit following the law and put your faith and trust in me. Be done with it. Just follow me. But they can't. Because, oh, I know God says that, but he really doesn't mean it. He really wants us to kill his animals. Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7. Do we get a picture yet? Do we have the picture yet? Everything. It's like in one scoop after another. Same flavor. God doesn't like it. God doesn't like it. God never desired it. God never delighted in it. Jeremiah chapter seven. God never wanted sacrifices in the first place. He wanted man's obedience. He never wanted the killing of animals. He wanted man's love. He never wanted the butchering of creatures. He wanted man to be righteous right with him. That's what he wanted. He desired the fellowship with Adam and Eve in the garden. He did not desire to kick them out and have to kill creatures. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 22. Jeremiah 7, 22. Actually, verse 21. I'll start there Jeremiah, to give you a little bit more time. If you're looking for it, Jeremiah 7, 21. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices and eat flesh. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God. Why did God give the laws? Because they wouldn't listen. The laws that he gave to the Jewish people were because they would not obey. He said, I'll give you more. I'll give you more. I'm just going to show you. You can't listen to me. You can't follow me. 
I will be your God and you shall be my people and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you that it may be well unto you. But they hearkened not nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart and went backward and not forward. God said, when I brought you out of Egypt, he said this, what did he say? He said, I brought them out of Egypt he said, I spake not to your fathers nor commanded them concerning burnt offerings or sacrifice. He said, I did not command them. When we left Egypt, I did not. Do you know, do you know why I believe that happened? That he said, I didn't command them when they came out of Egypt. You know why I believe he said that? Does anybody remember the last sacrifice before they came out of Egypt? Anybody remember? What was the last sacrifice? The sacrifice of the Passover lamb to rescue or save the first one. The Passover lamb was the sacrifice. And God said, when you left Egypt, I said, you don't have to do it anymore. When they left Egypt, he said, I stopped telling you to do it. Do you realize that? You realize God had already told him I was done with the sacrifices when you guys left Egypt. I was done with it already. The Passover lamb was sacrificed. The symbolic final lamb. And that should have been the last sacrifice on this earth until Jesus Christ, the actual Passover lamb, died for our sins. It should have been the symbolic last sacrifice. Woo that says something, doesn't it? That should have been the last sacrifice. But the children of Israel would not have it that way. They were going to keep doing the sacrifices, keep trying to do the vain oblations and everything else. And God said, I didn't command them concerning sacrifice. I command them, obey my voice and I'll be your God. And they're like, yeah, if God's going to be our God, then we got to keep doing all the law and we're doing all the sacrifices still. God said, I did not tell you that when you left Egypt. That right there is a major statement. That speaks volumes. That Passover lamb should have been the last sacrifice that you guys ever killed. But you continued the sacrifices. Do you know what happens when you try to please God in your way after you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and you try to sacrifice on your own? What you're saying is, God, yours wasn't enough. I'll still try to do it my way. The statement that the children of Israel, as they continued to sacrifice, was a slap in the face to God saying that Passover lamb that freed us from our sin and our slavery in Egypt, that Passover lamb that we killed was not good enough. We've got to keep doing it. That's a major statement when you realize that verse right there. We could stop there, but I don't want to. Um, let's go back one chapter. Let's go back one chapter. Jeremiah chapter six. Jeremiah chapter six. Look at verse number, um, look at verse number 19, Jeremiah 6, 19. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts. Wow. Because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. To what purpose cometh there to me incense from Sheba and the sweet cane from a far country? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices sweet unto me. Look at Hosea, Hosea, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Hosea chapter six, Hosea chapter six. Does anybody understand what flavor we're eating now? Chocolate, no sacrifice. I never desired it. I never wanted it. I never delighted it. I did not want man to kill my creatures that I was taking pleasure in. I did not want that. I did not desire that. But because of your sin, that's the symbolism I gave you. And I even tried to stop it at one time and you continued doing it. I wanted it to stop because I did not want my creatures brutally butchered. It was symbolism. But it should have stopped when you left Egypt and you still wanted to continue it. Hosea chapter six, look at verse number six. Verse number six, for I desire what? Mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Two books later, Amos, Amos chapter five. Amos chapter five. God 
Can you see the men of God, the prophets of God, trying to tell the children of Israel, quit the sacrifices, quit the sacrifices, quit the sacrifices, quit the sacrifices. And nobody listening to them. God told them to stop, stop killing the animals. Stop. Do away with it. The Passover lamb has already been slain. No more. Jeremiah says it. Hosea says it. Here we have Amos saying it. Amos chapter 5. Verse number 21, I hate, I despise your feast days. Oh, I want to keep the, the feasts of the Old Testament. Go right ahead. What did God say here? I hate and despise your feast days. What do you want to keep? I want to keep the things that God hates. I want to follow in the footsteps of those that did what God said not to do. God said, I hate, I despise your feast days and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. I'm going to plug my nose when I walk into your place of worship. Because it stinks to me, God says. He says this, verse 22, Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not Accept them. Can you tell me one sacrifice after the Passover lamb that God accepted? Can you find one? He said, I don't accept those. <laughs> I ended my acceptance at the Passover lamb. I'm done with that. I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vials, but let judgment run down as waters and righteousnesses as a mighty string. Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness 40 years, O house of Israel? <laughs> did you offer 40 years of sacrifice? Why did you waste your time and kill those creatures? What a waste. But ye have borne the tabernacle of what? Your Molech. <laughs> And she in your images, the star of your God, which you made to yourselves. You carried your own false gods around because I said, do away with it. I said, I was done with it. You kept doing it. Therefore, you were not sacrificing to me because I am not accepting those. Jeremiah, Isaiah said it. Jeremiah said it. Hosea said it. Amos said it. Let's go to Micah chapter six. A few books later, Micah. Micah chapter 6. Does anybody realize that God said, I don't want any more sacrifices? Does anyone realize that God said, I never did desire and delight in sacrifices? It was never my delight, never my desire. Micah chapter 6, verse 6. Micah 6, 6. Wherewith, all, wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? How should I come before God? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. I want to look back now. A few more verses will be done. Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs chapter 21. We're going to do a series on sacrifices. We're going to go into the symbolism behind the different sacrifices of the Old Testament. We're going to do a series over the next few Sunday nights on different sacrifices of the Old Testament, what they used, the symbolism that was there, why it was done. We're gonna go into that, but we're gonna also re realize that whenever there were sacrifices, it was symbolic. And it wasn't the desire of God. It was because of the sin of man. Proverbs chapter 21, the Bible says in verse one, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. 
it's more acceptable to do justice and judgment. I want to go now to the book of Matthew. We've been in the Old Testament. Matthew chapter 9. I will say that there are terms that we will use. And I want, uh, uh, this is a, a, a jumping off point that we need to be cautious in our thinking of sacrifice. There is such thing as called sacrificial giving. There is such thing as that. But the truth is, it doesn't matter if you give to God of your time, your talents, your money, or anything else. It doesn't matter. If he does not have your heart, you're just doing it to try to appease a God who says, I want none of your sacrifices. I want your heart. I want your obedience. I want you to listen to me. I want you to love me. I want you to be righteous before me. I want you. Matthew chapter 9. He says, verse number 11. Jesus is sitting at a house with publicans and sinners. Verse 11. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Why is Jesus doing this? Uh, we got to be, uh, we can't spend our time with those kind of people because the law says we don't need to dirty our hands with them. Jesus said, I'd rather have mercy than sacrifice. You're sacrificing your testimony by not talking to the lost people. That's like the monks those that live in monasteries. If I live separate from everybody else, then I will be holy and righteous to God and he will be more pleased with my life. And God said, I'd rather have mercy than sacrifice. Go tell him about me. Go tell him about me. I'm sacrificing my life for you by not getting myself dirty with the world. Um, he didn't tell you to not go to the world and tell him about Christ. He said, don't defile yourself with the world. Don't enjoy the pleasures of sin like the world. But he doesn't say to go be separate from them and stay away from them and never tell them about Jesus Christ because you're sacrificing your life by staying pure and clean, by not getting any, around anybody. He said, go look what that means. He said, you guys go study your, your, the scriptures again. I'll give you some scripture, he said. Go and learn what that means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. I'm not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. God desires mercy rather than sacrifice. Matthew chapter 12. He says this in verse 3, but he said unto them, Matthew 12, 3, have you not read what David did when he was in hunger and they that were with him? How he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat? neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests. It was against the what for David to eat the showbread? Against the law. Well, when someone breaks the law, what does God do? He kills them. Right? Uh-uh. Not always. What about when Uzzah touched the Ark of the Covenant? God killed him immediately. Don't touch that. Why? That symbolized the presence of God. And you don't just have a right to stabilize the presence of God on your own. You are not the one that stabilizes God's presence. And Uzzah reached back and God took his life. Uzzah takes his own life into his own hands and God takes his life. Look here, it says this. He says in verse number, um, verse number five, or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days, the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath? They what? Profane the Sabbath and are, what does that say? Blameless. Blameless. How, how did a priest, how did a priest break the Sabbath law? How did he do it? Anyone know? 
He kept the fire going. He kept the fire going. You're not supposed to light a fire or mess with fire on the Sabbath day. Well, the priest did it. And God said, yep, and they're blameless. Well, they broke the Sabbath law. And anybody else that lit a fire on the Sabbath would be killed or... Yep. Because God said, those things really aren't that important to me. They're really not that important. They're symbolic. It's all symbolic. It's where your heart lies. Where's your heart? Where's your obedience? But I say unto you, verse six, that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye would not have condemned the guiltless. And then Mark chapter 12. I'm going to close with this one. This is a start off to remind us that first, if you think that you're sacrificing anything to God, think about this. Are you listening to God? Are you obeying God? Are you putting your faith and trust in God? Or are you just offering sacrifices because you think you're going to make him happy? I'm going to put $5 on the offering plate, Lord. He says, I don't use American currency up here. <laughs> if I wanted, I can have that whole mint. Lord, I want to sacrifice to you. This is, this is more than I can really afford to give you. Is it? Remember that word imputed that we used this morning that God gives us his righteousness? He owns the cattle out there. Where's his children? If you belong to him, Lord, this is all I can afford. And he said, wait, you're my child. You're my child. You can afford more than that. I, I can take care of your needs. But remember this, what you're giving to me, I let you have that. You're giving me back. You're giving me back a piece of paper. And God says, listen, I, I believe God could look down from heaven and say to us, you got $5? Don't worry, I've got the gold to back it up. <laughs> it's on my street. We walk on it. This probably doesn't have the gold to back it up in American currency. God's got the gold. Look at this verse. We'll be done. Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. <clears throat> Verse 29, and Jesus answered, Mark 12, 29, and Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. And thou shalt give 10% of thy tithes, and thou shalt be um, faithful to every church service. And... Trust me, he didn't throw all that in there, did he? He said, love God, love me. He said, just love me. Abraham Lincoln made this statement. Someone said, Abraham Lincoln, I believe in the study of Abraham Lincoln, he was not a member of any church that I ever found out. And someone asked Abraham Lincoln why he was not a member of a church. And there was so much corruption, so much nonsense. That's where the Baptists were breaking away in America. We had the American Baptists. We had the Southern Baptists. Everyone was breaking away, taking sides with slavery. And, and Abraham Lincoln said this, if I ever find the church whose motto is thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, that's the church I will join with all my heart. That was what he said. He was said, I'm tired of the nonsense and the fakery going on. He didn't say these words. I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing now. But he said, if I can find that church, that church I will join with all my heart. A lot of people want to make Abraham Lincoln out to not be a believer. Abraham Lincoln did not go to many churches because he just didn't like the just playing the game stuff. Churches taking sides with, we're going to fight for slavery. We're going to fight against slavery. He said, what about just loving God? He continues. Verse number 31 in the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, well, master, thou hast said the truth. For there is one God and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than 
all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. If you will just love God with your heart, that one thing, if you will just love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, then you actually have done more than every sacrifice of animals throughout history. Because God never desired or delighted in one of them. It was never his desire. So if anybody wants to talk and brag about sacrifices and what they've done to appease their God, remind them of this. God despises and hates those things. It's only symbolic of your blood guiltiness and what you owe to God for your sin. But you know what God delights in? Obedience. Mercy. God delights in those things. So as we look at this series of, of sacrifices that we're going to get into, remember this. Before we get into them, before we do, remember this. They were never God's desire or delight in the first place. So as we start getting into them, don't think, well, that's a really, really neat one. That's a powerful and good one. I think God would be pleased with that one. No, 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 no. He never was pleased. They're symbolic. He never delighted in sacrifices. And he tried to do away with them. He tried to, but the children of Israel wouldn't even stop when God tried to stop them. They kept it going. And now we have a generation of people who are trying to go back to sacrifices, to Old Testament ways, to the law. And God said, I had never desired it in the first. If he never ever desired it or delighted it in the first place, why would he desire or delight in it now? Why would God change his mind and say, you know what? It's getting close to my return. I probably ought to fire up the fireplace and start burning more animals. Because uh, I sure miss my animals dying. The nonsense of our society and our world today. And God said, I never delighted in it. I never did. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, forgive us, please, when we try to appease you. When we're not even listening and obeying you. Lord, Sometimes we don't even know what you want because we're not reading the word of God. We don't know how to respond to people. We respond in bitterness. We respond in anger. We respond in our own understanding. We respond in so many ways other than giving them scripture and saying, this is what the Lord wants because we don't know what you want. And we have people around us telling us what you want. You want us to go to church three times a week. You want us to give 10% in the offering plate. You want us to go door knocking. You want us to read the Bible and pray. And if we do all those five things, then we're going to be the happiest believers in the world and you're going to be happy with us. And Lord, we aren't even listening to you because we're just trying to please you and appease you. Lord, if, you, if, if we give you our love, if we truly love you, you will be pleased because then we won't need laws to follow. We'll follow you and love you based on the principles of the word of God. The law of grace, the law of faith. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for you giving us these verses over and over and over and over again so that there is no denying or doubting what the scriptures say. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.